Hi there, I'm Peter Millard, and in the 10 minute workshop this week, let's back to basics as I show you how I go about fitting some magnetic catches to some small cabinets. That's coming up next. So not exactly in the most challenging of things, fitting a little magnetic catch to a small cabinet door like this, but there are a couple of things that can still uh, catch you out. Um, we'll get into those in a little minute. Now, you'll need a few tools for this. Uh, you need a uh, tape measure, of course, screwdriver, and an all are very useful. Uh, sliding square, very handy. Drill driver, of course. A little bit of tape, very useful. And you need some scrap that's exactly the same thickness as the cabinet carcass. We're going to fit catches on these two little cabinets. You might remember these from the uh, flush hinge video that I did a little while back. We've got one like this with a, an overlay door and one with an inset door. And we'll do these separately because the approach is quite different. Uh, you will, of course, also need a magnetic catch of some kind. These are very simple uh, magnetic catches. Just uh, picked up these off uh, Amazon. And they're very straightforward. Uh, there are a couple of things that you, I do see people get wrong sometimes. These come in two parts. Uh, uh, the body of the, the magnetic catch holds the actual magnets and there's a striker plate as well. The striker plate has a little bit of metal in it, usually on a rubber kind of washer, so it's got a little bit of give to it, so it's got a little bit of flex. And when they're connected together, often the striker has a sort of a, a curved lip to it. That lip is supposed to follow round the body of the actual magnetic catch. A lot of people I see fitting them the other way round, and that rarely works properly for a couple of reasons, which will become clear later on. So that's the way it should go. These are 45 mil catches with six kilos of pull pressure, of pull force needed to open them. So they're perfect for small cabinet doors like this. Now, when you're fitting a catch like this, one of the first things you've got to consider is where you want it to go. On a door like this, you're probably going to have a little cabinet knob of some kind. And if you put that around the center, what you absolutely don't want to do is end up having to fit the striker plate around it somehow. So basically, I always try and fit my cabinet knobs uh, just over halfway up. So if the halfway is there, I'm going to take it up very slightly to there. So what we want to do is come down a little bit and fit the catch just under there. So what's that? 230. Okay. So what we'll do with that height established, we'll put a little pencil mark on there. And then what I want to do is put some tape around that door of that kind of height. Doesn't have to be exact. And we're going to go all the way around on the inside as well. And then we can do the same thing on the, on the cabinet carcass. Move the door out of the way. And now we've got a nice clean line which isn't going to affect the cabinet at all. So we can put our pencil mark across there and extend that line around. You can then bring that back around the inside. And the same here. So that then gives us a center line on the carcass and the door that we can work to. So back inside the door now, the biggest problem of course is that all this happens inside and you've got to align this stuff you know, without being able to get at it. I've left the back off these by the way, just so that I can get a camera in there. I'm not going to cheat and go through the side here. Anyway, we're going to take our completed assembled latch and we're just going to eyeball this against the centre line. We take our little piece of scrap and put that over the edge of the carcass. I'm just going to bring the complete latch up forwards so that it just touches, just bears against the front edge there. And we're just going to hold that in place with our awl. Just mark a couple of little points in there. Oop. Then we can drill. And 
I can see them. I'm just going to make those a little bit more obvious. Okay, so we know where that needs to go. We do the same on the inside of the door, but this time we're using our scrap to represent the thickness of the carcass, placing it ever so slightly inside the edge of the door, then repeating the process with the latch. Notice how I've put a pencil mark on the latch to make the alignment easier. Then it's mark and drill in the usual way. And with the tape removed, we can fix the plate in position on the door. and then repeat the process with a catch inside the cabinet. And that's that. Uh, six kilos of pull pressure. It's quite a lot actually when you haven't got a handle. Ooh. The screw mounting points are slotted so they're easy to adjust if needs be, but otherwise that is it. So that was the overlay door with an insert door like this one. The process is pretty much the same but the other way around uh, because you've got to allow for the thickness of the uh, door going into the carcass. Uh, and for that I'd suggest using a skinnier strip of, uh, uh, of door thickness material. As before, we mark the height and use tape to transfer the centre line around. Then, using our door thickness offcut on the inside edge of the cabinet, we can position the latch so it just touches, then mark and drill as before. On the inside of the door we position the plate close to the edge so it can be centred, marked, drilled and fixed in place. And then we do the same with the catch body inside the cabinet. So there you go, that's how I fit my magnetic catches. No fuss or drama, no big measuring or marking nightmare. Just use a couple of little bits of scrap of the same thickness as the door in the carcass, uh, depending on whether you're doing an insert or a flush door, an overlay door, and you're pretty much good to go. Uh, simple and easy to do. These catches are really convenient. I know people get a bit snippy about magnetic catches, but these ones are really nice quality. They're only a couple of quid each on Amazon, and I, I haven't had any problems with them at all. I know when I did the previous ones, a few people said, oh, tried those before, they're terrible. Uh, I haven't had any major problems with these, but if you have trouble with any of these catches, just let us know about it. It'd be really good to have that kind of feedback. But that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.